Welcome to Drum and Drummer, a podcast focused on drums, drumming and drummers. I'm George Pickering and that's Ben Winty and we are both professional drummers in this business we call music. So stick around and join us as we pass the time whilst trying to stay in time. They can word it however they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I'm nearly 40. I ain't doing that sort of shit. Like, fuck it now. So sweet, so sweet to the touch of your love, baby. I want to be inside inside you. you. I want to see this this night night through. So sweet, so sweet to the touch of your love, baby. I want to be inside you. I want to see this night through. Yeah. Uh. Mm. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. (laughs) Bye bye. (laughs) <laughs> that was of course a, that was a tune we made up yeah when we used to play a lot of darts yeah every day for at least two hours minimum <laughs> uh <laughs> work really <laughs> suffered during that period <laughs> i should mix this song yeah but i'm on a rich vein of form here yeah we got so. embarrassingly good at darts <laughs> um let's explain i was gonna turn in pro yeah you <laughs> let's explain Jacking this whole music song- thing in that song came about. So it's the, what was so sweet? Was it three twenties? Just three single twenties. Yeah. And it's like that's what you that's your minimum you're trying to get. Yeah, that's your bread and butter. That's your Because you it's know. so often you get one and then you you you, <laughs> you did get a five and then you get a one. That was that was called a that was a Divoc, wasn't it? Yeah, Divoc. That came from Reebok. Classic. classic. It was the classic over adjustment. So yep. you get the twenty, the five and the one. Classic Reebok classic, mm. Reebok Arigi, Divok Arigi, Divok. <laughs> that was your that was your Divok. Yeah. And then we had uh we called the Treble Twenty Plum. Yep. Red. And then you had the Treble Nineteen, I think was grape. Yep. And the Treble Eighteen had one as well. Maybe it was like the cherry, was it? Yeah, something like that. And so if you got one of each, you got that was the the fruit basket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then uh there was the neil classic which is he'd get a, a 20 a 5 and an 18 because he'd over over adjust yep yeah we just had all these sorts of things and uh pre-covid and yeah then, but there's yeah there's so they're so sweet because i think it's it just started, a sweet satisfying so sweet we'd be like oh that's so sweet so and then sweet, we started yeah. adding more lyrics <laughs> to it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you know Slowly over. It was probably so sweet to the touch. Your love, baby. Someone probably said that. I think, and yeah. And then and then someone added, I want to be inside you. <laughs> and then I want to see this night through. Yeah, and it was great. The, complete yeah. the song. Yeah. But anyway, time, we got a lot yeah. to um, crack oh, on with not, through this show. Darts. Yeah. Yeah, done with darts. It was great. I haven't played since. Right. No. Let's talk, let's talk about uh, car trouble. Yeah, go on. I'm ready for this. Because there's been more. Yep. Um, this time specifically van trouble. Unfortunately, this wasn't. So this was a hire van that mm. I had the other day, um, not for a gig, thank fuck, mm. but it was for removing my sofa from my flat and bringing a new sofa in. Right. Picked up a hire van in the morning. Got my sofa packed down and out of the door. Got the new sofa in, set yep. up, great. Yeah. Load the old sofa into the van. Right, I want to take this to the tip. Mm. I'll get on the blower to my mate Emmett. Because yep. I've been to the tip before. Yeah. And I always get I don't know about you, I get the I get the, the anxiety mm. of I don't really know where anything goes. No. And the bigger boys at the tip might tell me off. Yeah. I've had to go to the tip a few times recently at work with Dave. Dave's the handyman around the house. He's about 60-something, bull geezer. He's been a mechanic 38 years of his life. Now he's a handyman. And he just sort of, he just knows how the tip works. You yeah. know what I mean? He yeah. just knows which bay to go to. Oh, we need that bay because we've got metal and wood, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. if you say yeah. so, Dave. Yeah. And then uh, he just talks to all the men like they're mates. And I'm like, yeah. I wouldn't have this sort of tip confidence do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, you need tip confidence. Yeah, you do. And you have to be brave. And every time I've gone to the tip, I usually go to Port Solent. Yeah, nice. They got the, the people who work there are brilliant. Mm. And they're so helpful. And just like, and before you even need to ask, they're like, number eight, 
Yeah. <laughs> or you're carrying something, they're like, oh, bring that over here. I'll put it yeah. over here. Yeah. They're brilliant. Got a lovely tip if you want to put it in this tip. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, phone Emmett. He didn't answer. Uh, sure. He was on a lovely weekend away with his friends. Um, because he is, um, we call him King of the Bins, or at right. least I do, but he's like head of waste for Portsmouth City Council. Oh, okay. So I was like, if anyone knows about getting rid of a sofa, <laughs> it's going to be him. Yeah. He texted me, said, oh, sorry, Mr. Cool, what's up? I said, oh, I've got a sofa I need to take to the tip. I've got a lovely detailed response. Yeah. But what you need to do is you need to book a slot. Right. You need to book a time. And then because I was in a high van, I need to take my rental agreement with me. Mm. So they just don't have people willy nilly dumping shit in vans. Yeah. Um, and you had to book a slot online and then you had to put higher van instead of the reg. He right. was like, take your driving license, take your thing so that you can prove you're from Hampshire, blah, blah, blah. And um, so I had a look, Port Solent, booked up. Oh, uh, shit, I need to get this sofa out today. Yeah. Sedgensworth, near where I grew up. Okay. Slot at four o'clock. Perfect. Perfect. Sofa's already in the van. Half three. Let's head on, head yeah. on down to, to Sedgensworth. <laughs> right. <laughs> just 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 about to turn into the road where the tip entrance is. Uh-huh. Uh I lose all steering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, as in the steering yeah, wheel. Can't, can't move? steer. Can't right. steer. <laughs> can't steer. So I I sort of managed to come a little bit off, so I'm turning left and I end up basically blocking the whole junction. <laughs> I'm in this van, I'm like, fuck. Like and and then the van just dies. Amazing. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. And then two guys uh, who are coming out of the tip, I'm obviously blocking the exit <laughs> yeah. to join the main road, get out. And they're like, you're right. And I'm like, I've just lost steering. Like, mm. where am I going to start? And of course, they're assuming this is my van. Yeah. But it's not. It's a, no. it's a, it's a higher van. And then another guy comes out and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm a mechanic. Oh, perfect. And I was like, oh, great. And he's like, what's going on? I was like, I've got no idea. I just lost steering. Yeah. And he's like, okay, well, let's just push it back so we can get it out of the way and then he managed to like roll it down the hill and get it started right and he drove down the road and he came back and pulled it into the side road but in a much safer sort of place and um he was like something's i don't know what's going on but you know you need to call breakdown it's, yeah. it's just losing power or whatever so it, the van's still running and then it just dies and then it won't nothing nothing happens Right. So, okay, good, great. So it's like, right, hire pack. It's got what happens if you break down, phone forward. It takes a couple of goes to get... Do you not hate it? I fucking hate it, George. You're calling up a thing and it's like a message. And it's like, you're just doing yeah. this to delay yeah. answering the phone. Like, thank you for calling for... Just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Option one for this. You press option two and then you wait again. And you press option two again. And then it just fucking disconnects. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh, gosh, you got to go through that again. Anyway, I speak to someone, and he's like, what's the reg of the vehicle, blah, blah, blah. And I had to explain, like, oh, it's a high van, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, where'd you get it from? I was like, oh, Southern Self Drive. And um, he was like, oh, looks like their policy expired in 2022. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. Don't, don't help me, does it? No. But anyway, <laughs> a good lad on the phone, and he said, we'll get someone out from the AA. So, and then I get like a online tracker yeah. sort of thing. And he says it's going to be about an hour. So it's like, right. okay. But I'm like, I can see the tip. Yeah. I've still got this sofa. It's now like half four. Mm. So I just walk into this, the tip and yeah. I'm like, go up to one of the guys. And I'm like, bit of an odd one. Yeah. I've got a, an appointment at four to drop off a sofa. And he looked, he said, oh yeah, you're in a higher van. I said, yeah. And I went, bit odd, but I've just broken down outside. <laughs> Can I walk the sofa in? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'll yeah, give you a yeah. hand. Yeah, nice. And so uh, he, he came out and got the sofa. We got the sofa in the tip. Yeah. So I was like, that's the least I wanted. Yeah. And then it's a case of um, waiting for the AA. Yeah. Um, they turned up about an hour and a half later. Um, nice guy, very helpful, but had that sort of attitude of like, Oh, what's going on here? Like, I, I don't know. I'm not a, you know, oh, you shouldn't have taken the work van to... That's it. It's not my van, mate. It's yeah. a higher van. Yeah. Just, are you going to fix it or not? Like, yeah. It's assuming you know stuff, but then mo kind of mocking you in tone because yeah. you don't know stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh, mate, just just fix it. 
Yeah. Just so basically the alternator was fucked, so the battery hadn't been charging. Um oh, okay. so the, the battery died, but he, he charged it up and he was like, Where's it gas? He said, Just go straight back to the higher place. Mm. Don't go on the motorway. It should yeah. get you there. Um Oh fucking hell. It's weird, isn't it? Because I I've never had a, a breakdown of a hire car. I don't think I've ever hired a car. So that's why. But I um yeah, to have to wait for a car that isn't even yours to be fixed. It's almost like, can I just leave it? Can I just they figure <laughs> it out, you know? Yeah. But it's just it's just like I'm getting sick of waiting for <laughs> waiting for the AA. Yeah. <laughs> it's like fuck's sake. Yeah. But um very friendly, helpful couple of guys from the public. Tip guys are great. Yeah. AA guy, bit of a knob, but he got it fixed. Yeah. You know, got got us back on the road. Yeah. Um so this is the thing. Yeah. In Brighton, if you want to get rid of a sofa or anything, just put it outside your house for <laughs> two minutes and then uh and then it will be gone. But you know, that sounds But dramatic. yeah, thankfully I you know, hadn't used that van didn't use that van for a gig. No, yeah. Because that's the exact sort of time I'd have been leaving. Yeah, yeah. For a gig, and then you just think, yeah, what, what would you? Yeah. What would you do then? I the closest I've had to it, at my car breaking down for a gig, it was my first Ford Fiesta, and I was driving from. I think I left immediately from work when Neil and I used to do this job, in Haven every Saturday morning, ten till twelve, and I was going straight from there to a gig, and the gig was about three hours away, and I was leaving the place in Haven, and then. The car just sort of lost power and the dashboard, everything on the dashboard just went. As in like, you know, you got your clock and you got your miles and everything. It just disappeared and it went blank and the car had just just died. Just sort of died for a second. And thankfully, I managed to pull in and went, this isn't good. Turn the car off, turn it back on again and it was fine. And I went, <laughs> okay, let's just ignore that. And then just drove to the gig and back. But I was like, fucking hell. Like, I don't know. Thankfully, I've never had a breakdown or car trouble on the way to a gig. But mm. apart from when my clutch broke, yeah, that was quite bad, actually. So you have had problems. I have had problems. <laughs> but we got there. So, yeah. But we all stunk of clutch. Anyway, speaking of gigs, <laughs> I didn't have one on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> but I played a brilliant prank on um my bandmates because for the last, well, pretty much every Saturday since... This month, my band Wildwood Sky have had a gig. So, yeah, May 6th, May 13th, May 20th, we've all had a gig. Whether or not I've been on it. Actually, I haven't been on any of them. But <laughs> um, one, I was in Greece, and the other two, other bands. But anyway, 27. Other bands for more money. Yeah. <laughs> and more <laughs> and local. Closer, yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, we didn't have a gig this Saturday. Um, but I tried to pretend that we did. So about it's a classic. It's a classic it's a, joke. It's such a good joke because it's just because when you don't have when I found when I don't have a gig on a Saturday, I will think, well, surely I do. You know, if I've been having gigs on Saturdays, and um, if I don't, it's it's weird. I'm sort of checking emails like, have I had one? I don't know. What's what's going on? So I thought as a joke, I'll uh, I'll just send this text, and the text said, let me find the chat. It said, cut this out while I find it. What time are we meeting for the gig today? 5 p.m., yeah? And that was at half three. And then I put, only messing, we don't have a gig today. And Joe replied, don't fucking do that. Jesus. And then he put, I'm in the middle of a forest. He was on a walk or something. And then Lennon just wrote, prick. Ben Y, he's the nicest one. He just put, yeah, god damn. <laughs> and then Lucy wrote, I literally shit myself on the M25 on my way to another gig when I read this. Was also in standstill traffic for two hours, so on the way to shitting myself again. Cheers, George. Don't know how that's my fault, but... Um, anyway, yeah, just a good prank. Just a good <laughs> prank, because... A good bit of harmless fun. A bit of harmless yeah. fun, because if it's, you know... Oh, my God. You know, when you have a Saturday off, and you go, oh, lovely Saturday, and if someone goes, hey, when are you getting to the gig? Like, that's the most stressful thing because it's a different mindset when you don't have a gig. You know, you're like, oh, I have the whole day off. And if someone suddenly goes, no, you have to pack up your drums now and get to Hull, you know. Awful. So, um, yeah, I didn't have a gig, so I did a little prank. 
But you did have a gig. Yeah, not on the Saturday. Oh. I had a gig on the Sunday. Oh, bank holiday weekend. Yeah, it was uh, freshman year. Um, it was a 50th birthday party. Nice. And it was interesting because freshman year is pop punk. Yep. You know, bit of rock, bit of metal. And a 50th, was it was interesting because the ideal audience yeah. is between 30 and 40. Yeah. Because those are the people who were teenagers and at uni during yeah. the late 90s and noughties. Um So 50 was like, they're just a bit old mm. and all their kids are just a bit young. Yeah. Because they got kids, but their kids are like 13, 14, maybe mm. 15. And so... There's a lot of the songs which are just universal. Yeah. It smells like Teen Spirit, Basket yeah. Case. Like, everyone just knows them, what, yeah. however. But then you, your things like Sum 41 and Bowling for Soup are a little bit more targeted. At, they resonate with the 30-year-olds. Yeah. Not the 50 or the yeah. teenagers. So, but it was fine. They were lovely. I and mean, they had a fuck-off massive house. It was in their garden. They had this huge marquee. They had, like, people come in and do this, like, their catered food. There was a hot tub, a swimming pool. They had their own gym. There were Teslas in the driveway, Range Rovers, VW. I mean, yeah, I'm in the wrong game if that's what I'm after. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, lovely people, nice, um, and it was fine. <laughs> it was fine, you know, <laughs> nothing to uh, write home about. Only other thing was, um, I had my stool, you know. Locked in that new higher position. Oh yeah. So I was like, I'm going to see about the old hip pain mm. again. Mm. No hip pain. Nice. So that's good. That's all it was. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just that pop the stool up an inch. Yeah. <laughs> Sorted. Nice. Um, yeah. Other than that, but we had um, we've had a few more like freshman year bookings come in uh, for this year, which yeah. is great. It's my mm. busiest band, which is fine by me because I actually like the music. <laughs> <laughs> in that band. Um but we've had this gig booking for um Oh yeah. December this year for a I think it's a fortieth party. And uh the agency sent this message <laughs> <laughs> to us uh, from the client. Yep. I had an idea today while walking the dog. Would it be possible for the band to record a ten second video message saying Come to blank and blank's 40th birthday on the 2nd of December and prepare to be rocked, <laughs> brackets, followed by a well-known riff. Uh, we want to start telling our mates about the party and thought it would be a bit more fun than just a normal WhatsApp message. Lol. Um, keep your ideas to yourself, mate. Yeah. I'm not doing that. So, a few questions about this. How much production are they expecting to? Are they expecting a video with this, or are they expecting? They want a video. It was a video. So you guys have all got to get in to probably room two at the old blacksmiths, set up guitar and amps. Again, I think this taps into the perception that we're like a band. Yeah. That live and eat together every day. Yeah. And are rehearsing. Yeah. A, we don't rehearse. No. B, only see my cat the gigs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but also, nah, fuck off. I ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah, to, and then to play a riff, like we've got everything set up. Yeah. And then it's like, you can't do that at then like someone's wedding. No. Can you just stop there? We'll just delay the first dance yeah. a couple of minutes because we just got to record a video for this 40th birthday party. For, yeah, for another, for another gig. Yeah. But, and you kind of think like, how do I tactfully like say no? Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I know you've done this as well. You can get worried about what you write in your email. Yeah. You can get worried about you get worried about every email. And then sometimes you just got to go, just just say what you're thinking. Yeah. You know, just, just, just fucking type it and press send. Yeah. What's the worst that can happen? So I just replied. Fuck off. <laughs> but to the agency, I just put, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Cheers, Ben. Yeah. Like, yeah. they can word it however they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I'm nearly 40. I ain't doing that sort of <laughs> shit. Like, fucking hell. Yeah. But anyway, um, I guess a bit of correspondence yeah. then. Speaking let's, of emails. Let's talk correspondence. So we got a lovely message from Pete Thomas. Uh, I'll get the message up here. I'll read it out. Why not? Oh, God. I've reached my time limit on Instagram. Hang on. Ignore limit for today. Um, Just go on the WhatsApp because you sent it to me. Well, it's all right. I'm already here. Uh, 
All right, lads. Thanks. For, this is the message now. That wasn't me. <laughs> right. This is the message. All right, lads. You might talk like that. I don't know. Thanks for making the podcast. Listen to almost all of them now. Have you ever tried to interview Pat Garvey or Graham Russell? Both would be very interesting in different ways. Cheers, Pete. First of all, thank you, Pete, for listening to almost all of them. That's very yeah. Kind. Which ones haven't you listened to? Yeah. <laughs> and why not? <laughs> yeah. You know? Maybe he doesn't like, I don't know, Woody or something. It's like, <laughs> I really don't like Bastille. I've listened to all of them apart from that one. Um, yes, they are They are on the, the list. We have said, I don't know if we've said it before, we have a guest list of people yeah we have a list of people we'd like to uh chat to at some point yeah it's Um, definitely yeah they're 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 up there and i think it's how do you feel about talking to pat on here i well do you know what it's a funny one because i think it would be great but also there's a there's an element of like to know it's i this is my thing with guests i think a guest is good if you really know him well like you know you with I don't know, any of your mates that you've had on here or any Sigh. of Sigh. Yeah. Do you know Neil. what I mean? <laughs> Neil. So it's like <laughs> it's like we know them well, so let's just have a chat. But also a guest is good when you have them on and you don't know them. So like Connor Griffiths or I mean Jay Sakura, any of those guys, you know. Yeah. Like someone that you know of but you've never actually spoken to. And then it or Jack Geary, it can almost like start, a, and that's like the first time you speak to them is on the pod, which is quite nice. But um, but I think Pat's somewhere in between. There's a few people that are somewhere in between where it's like I'm sort of still having lessons with him, still getting to know the whole, you know, we're still working on stuff. So I don't know, but yeah, definitely. Um, and Graham Russell would also be a great one. But do you know what I mean? There's certain people it's like I'd like to get to know them more before I have them on. Like there's certain uh-huh. drummers that would be like, I don't know, certain Brighton bass drummers as well that I'd like to meet organically and then be like, oh, do you want to be on this pod? Rather than like, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, definitely have them on at some point. Yeah, um, we'll certainly try. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but yeah. And thank you for listening, Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's um, Yeah. We will hopefully have a guest next week as well. Yes, it's not just yes us. we have something booked in. So, but, yeah. uh, but it's funny. I'll say one thing about guests. It's a funny thing because it's like there's there's people that we're like, oh, I think I think we'll have a good chance of getting him on, you know, or her on. But then there's some people that are like, you know, way off, like Dave Grohl or Chad Smith or whatever, or Matt Helders. It's like let's not even think about asking yet, you know, because it would just be <laughs> silly. Um, <laughs> but yeah. But we are always, I, me anyway, I'm always shocked when anyone says yes, you know, because it's, it's always nice when you go, would you perhaps want to be on our podcast? And they're like, yeah, yeah. man, love to. We're like, oh my God. This yeah, well, just uh, Pete be an example of this, of someone listening who we don't know personally. Yeah. That's always quite nice. Isn't yeah. It? Great. Uh, we also had an email from a long-time listener, <laughs> a big fan of the show. <laughs> Mine Muta. Yeah. Anne's been in touch again. Yeah. Yeah. This Keep is quite busy funny. in retirement. Yeah. Um, so this goes back to, we were talking about uh, the little rascal that was Rolf Harris. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she emailed in with a um, an autograph <laughs> <laughs> to Anne with love, Rolf Harris. Yeah. And he's drawn a little picture uh, from July 1963. That's insane. Yeah. And she's she's kept that. And I think she just wrote in her email. Oh, that's aged well. Yeah. So, yeah. Any more? I've got um, Paul Gascoigne's autograph. My dad uh, bumped into him at Glasgow Airport. And um, I've got his autograph. Uh, he went off the rails. Yeah. Um, just has bit. anyone got any other, you know, any autographs out there from people who've had a little bit of a downturn? Well, you know, anyone got Philip Schofield's autograph? Yeah. <laughs> You know? We'll get to Philip in a minute. I've got to tell you, I've, I must have told you I've got Emil Heskey's autograph. So have you? Me. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. It's quite funny. So one year I got like an England football calendar. Was that when you were, you were on trial at Villa? <laughs> yeah. And uh, Don't it, even know if he played for Villa. No. He um, definitely played for England though. Yeah. So. Um, Heskey it, and Rooney up front. Yeah. Banging the goals in. Love it. Um, but he, uh, but it listed all their birthdays like the england team's birthdays on the calendar and emil's birthday must have been in like 
January or something. Because I, I had this wild idea. I got it for Christmas. I was like, I'm going to send a birthday card to each England player this year. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell, really? Yeah. <laughs> so I wrote because I was, you know, a big ah. football fan. So I, I drew a picture of Eric Heskey. What year was this? Oh, you remember? I was young. Uh, like 2021. Yeah, it was last year, yeah. It was like, Happy birthday, Phil Foden. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck at the Euros. <laughs> I feel like it was around the time of the 2002 World Cup. So, okay. So I would have been what? 12 no oh younger eight. than that yeah i was born in 94 so yeah eight or something seven or eight yeah and i was South like Korea in japan wasn't it yeah, yeah big time. lovely wake up in the morning 8 a.m football match yeah. cheers yeah watch three of them amazing um that would see you through till 4 p.m <laughs> great day <laughs> we watched them at school it was Did weird no get much six form work done that <laughs> summer <laughs> but we have but anyway emil his birthday was first so i was like i'm gonna send him a birthday card by the way, the birthday card thing stopped at him. I didn't send any more after that. But I, I drew a picture of him and said, <laughs> happy birthday. It's better. You drew a picture of him. <laughs> what, like on the front of the card? I think so, yeah. <laughs> so I just drew a picture of him. Emil <laughs> Hersky. And then uh, I just sent the card. Genuinely. To where? Like, just, I can't remember. that. Like we found. <laughs> like, the FA. <laughs> something. Anyway, it got to him. Because uh, some time later, I got a message. Thank you for my card. Here's an <gasps> autograph. And there was an autograph picture of him. And um, yeah, Had I've he actually signed it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, but I assume it's just like if he, you know, this is back when he was at his peak. He probably got fan mail all the time. Yeah. So it's like, right, you need to sign 50 autographs today. And we're going to send them out to whatever. But um, yeah, so... Uh, and I just had it for years. And for a while, it was on my bass drum head on my kit when I used to practice. So when City Skies used to practice, there was a picture of Emil Heskey on the front of my kick drum. But um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. So that was my autograph. Beyond that, I can't remember what I've got. But um, Well, I, I, I wrote to a few footballers when I was a kid. Yeah. I was uh, into goalkeepers. Right. You know, used to prefer playing goalkeeper when I was younger. Yeah. I uh, mean, Lee would play football after school. I'd be in goal. Yeah, so I was a big fan of David Seaman mm. from in Euro 96. Yeah, I remember David I had, I had all the Eng all the full full England goalie kits from yeah. that tournament. And, um, yeah, I remember writing to him. He, I got his autograph. Yeah. Ian Walker. No, I don't remember Played for him. Spurs in England. Yeah. I got his autograph. And then I even got, I think I even I applied to be a mascot for Arsenal. Right. Like I wrote a letter saying, and they, they didn't let me. Yeah. I don't think that's special enough, <laughs> uh, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and But they did send me a team squad photo, Arsene Wenger, Burkamp, yeah. Ray, all that. And uh, on the back it had all their signatures, but they weren't real. Uh, it, they were printed. Yeah. But that was nice. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Well, there you go. So yeah, do uh, message in if you do have Philip Schofield's. Um, yeah, he's had a he's had a bad week. He's had a bad week. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Lots to think about there. But uh, you know, what will he do now? It's a weird one, isn't it? Because we could talk about it for a whole episode, all the different parts of it. But he's sixty something, sixty one. He's been on a million a year at ITV. He's fine. If he just disappears forever he'll be okay but holly willoughby she's what 30 something you know she's very like don't drag me down with you you know so i didn't know about him and the runner he uh <laughs> the best joke i heard about it was he done a runner and now he's done a runner good that's good isn't it um yeah we don't need to dwell on philip schofield but it's just interesting you know last week or week four rolf harris now, Philip, I mean, Rolf Harris yeah. died. You know, it's just yeah, we, a lot of pedos knew, in the news. He was a diddler for years. Yeah, but. yeah, big time. <laughs> Moving uh, seamlessly from uh, Philip Schofield to uh, the biggest mass shooting in America. Yeah. Great segue. <laughs> yeah. Smooth as, <laughs> smooth as caramel, baby. 
Um, I watched a documentary about the biggest mass shooting in America, yeah. which happened in Las Vegas. Obviously, recently went there, mm. so I thought it'd be interesting to watch it. Yeah, it's fucking horrific. Yeah, well, I bet. I don't know if you know, if you remember it, it was like 2017. Yeah, was it in a gay club and there was like 50 people? No, that was Florida. Oh, was that Florida? Yeah, which mass yeah, shooting? Yeah, which one? No, this was uh, in Las Vegas. It was a, an outdoor country music festival. Mm. Um, 20,000 people. Headliner goes on. Yeah. And then someone is in the Mandalay Bay Hotel, mm. has smashed the window out, has, has 47 machine guns. With Jesus. Them. And it's literally just fucking popping just wow. at the crowd wow. from 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 up high, yeah, and just streaming round after round. Oh my god! A fucking heavy artillery, yeah, at the crowd of people. I, like it's it's worth watching. Was it on? I'm a player. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but it's like fucking. There's no cover. There's no. no, no. And this guy's up high. They don't know where the shooter is. They think Jesus. there might be multiple shooters. Yeah. Like, and just, yeah, I think like 58 people died and like 800 were injured. Yeah. It's just insane. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And, um, and there's there's so much like footage from people's like iPhones and, yeah. and the whole, f- the festival's been filmed yeah. as well. Like yeah. <laughs> it's, and then suddenly you just hear like, bah, 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 bah. it just it goes on for like a whole magazine full of bullets. Yeah. But then you're also like, oh, that's our hotel where we stay. <laughs> Swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of Pretty, festivals going badly. The, oh, <laughs> sorry, the, the, <laughs> the main thing. So the, the headline band we're playing, yeah. the, the singer, guitarist, um, you know, big country artist in America, mm. Jason Aldean, I think his name right. was. He could hear the gunfire. He thought it was something in his in-ear monitors. Jesus. So he started having a go at his sound text. Wow. Like, you need to sort this out. Wow. Yeah, it is, and then they soon realise like something's going on, and then he said they the their band managed to get out and get in one of their tour buses, and the bassist was like, I think I've broken my hand or something, and then he looked on his bass guitar was a fucking bullet hole. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, and it just and it got lodged in the bass guitar. Wow, and that would have gone straight through his like gut if he hadn't. Jesus, been where his bass. Honestly, watch it. It's it's horrific. But you honestly go, not to get political, but like, and you still allow yeah. people to buy AR-15s? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You know, but they're like the police and the, there was a policeman and it was his first day on the job. Jesus. He got shot in the arm. Oh my God. Like, and then, yeah, the hot, that everyone, yeah, there's amazing stories, but just some of the footage is it's unreal. Yeah. Yeah. What's it unreal. called? 11 Minutes. Oh, okay. The worst shooting you were shooting in America or something like that. Yeah. It's like four parts. It is mad that nothing changes, you know. Like, I don't think it'll ever change the couples. Like, But then you think as well, like, a lot of UK festivals are in fields. Yeah. There are no high-rise buildings nearby. Yeah. This guy had the fucking perfect... Yeah. He was just a bit of a weird guy. Yeah. And he just snuck... What happened to him? 40 guns. He kill himself after. He killed himself. Yeah. He killed himself when they raided his room. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But he booked out like loads of rooms on that floor and like, yeah, he'd smashed the window out and they went in. There was just like guns everywhere. Jesus. And he'd rigged up like a camera outside his room on like a food cart so he could see if anyone was coming. Wow. Like, insane. Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't really know why he did it. No. He had no links to like terrorism or. Yeah. Yeah, definitely worth a watch. It's just because they yeah. can. Yeah, it's like no laws, and in terms of guns, really, and if they can. Well, that's the thing they, they said he hadn't broken the law until he first fired the gun. Yeah, yeah. So like he was in that he he owned all the guns legally. Yep. And he had I think I think it was something like forty six. Jesus. <laughs> guns. As soon as he pulled the trigger, he, that's when he broke the law. Yeah. But like up until that point. Yeah, up until that fine. point, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many guns yeah. have you got with you to, today? Oh, 47. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come in. Come in. Um, speaking of festivals going badly, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's my <laughs> best and worst segue. No, it's interesting to discuss Royal Blood, a big weekend. Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. A, I don't know 
big that was it Radio One's big weekend? Yeah, is that, that's is that what it was? Called, yeah, didn't know it was happening. No, really care. it was a weird one because they they always do it in a different town. Like they never do it in like London or Manchester. It'll always be in like a small town somewhere, almost to like give that town a big gig. Yeah, but yeah. Um, Skegness. Where was this one? I don't know. I, so, I don't know. Fairham, maybe. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah. No, I, I got sent a video by my mate, and it just said. You know, look at this, Royal Blood getting angry at the crowd. And basically, it looked like they were put on the bill between Niall Horan and Lewis Capaldi. And it's just the crowd weren't, I don't know, dancing, singing, making any noise. So Royal Blood got annoyed at the crowd. And, uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing because, mm. you know, I've played many gigs where the crowd isn't up for it. And uh, so many, so many, pretty much all of them, and yeah. it's um, it is a bit soul destroying. But I can imagine. I don't know. The main thing I'll say is that you know, there's a lot of comments saying, like, I don't know, self entitled or arrogant or whatever. But I, you know, if you're used to crowds wanting you there and you play and you're getting nothing back, it must be just. I don't know draining for the band but um yeah it's interesting but it's you know down to where they're putting the beer yeah. as well i just saw some stuff on reddit talking about it about yeah them getting a bit um arsy yeah with the crowd and then yeah you sent me that video and yeah it's interesting i guess they got a new album coming out mm. album number four and you kind of think it's not their crowd is no, it? no not at all it's not a crowd for you know, you've got to look at it from both sides. Like, the crowd aren't there to see Royal Blood. No. The crowd are there to just see loads of acts. Yeah. And it's going to be... It's Radio 1, isn't it? Like, it's going to be more on the pop spectrum, yeah. isn't it? So Royal Blood are going to stick out as a sort of yeah. rock band. Mm. But they're a rock band who have... A British rock band who have broken through into that mainstream. Yeah. And so... But that doesn't mean... You know, there'll be people in that crowd who wanted to see Niall Horan. Yeah. So then when Royal Blood come on, then of course they don't give a shit. Yeah. Or they're just going to stay at the front until Lewis Capaldi yeah. comes on. And so it's not, yeah, I guess like when we play weddings, people don't dance, I don't care. It's, oh, it's not a reflection on us. No. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just, but it, you can also feel like, oh, what's the fucking point? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the fucking point? Like we're doing all this and no one gives a shit. Yeah. But then you think, whose idea was it to put Royal Blood on? Mm. And whose idea was it to accept that gig? Yeah. Because put two and two together, it's not going to work, no. is it? Really, if you think about it. And is it just, is that is that a problem of like the industry PR machine of like, oh, we'll get you on this because your new album's coming out. Yeah. And actually, it, doesn't, it does more harm than good yeah. because they're not playing to their, to their audience. They're, they're big enough to bring their own audience to any size venue yeah and it's not the crowd's fault if they're not if they don't care no. that Royal Blood are playing yeah but at what point do you doesn't give you the right to be an arsehole no <laughs> really yeah but you can probably understand the frustration oh you can definitely understand the frustration it's um yeah I was saying like when I saw Stone Roses at Isle of White Festival it was them and before them it was Paul Weller and before that, it was some female pop artist who was very, you know, capital FM friendly. And then before that, it was some indie band. And she just, no one wanted to see her because it was all the indie lads went, brilliant, Weller and Stone Roses and some other band. I'm going to... Yeah, let's get a bag of cat yeah, and go mental. Much, and wear yeah. a bucket hat and, you know. Yes. And uh, <laughs> so they loved the first indie band. Oh, no, it was Jake Bug. How can I forget? It was Jake Bug. And Buggy! It, and then someone, I can't remember who, it wasn't Ellie Golding, but like that. And then Paul Weller and then Stone Roses. So it was like, you know, three northern rock acts that are very like, there is a sort of community of like, I don't know, indie It's your yeah. moddy sort of, um, what's that jacket with the crosshairs on the on the sides I know what you mean what like a just it's a like particular a mod, brand of like Parker um, yeah and it's got like crosshairs yeah um, I never know what that brand's called but they all wear yeah, it yeah but it was but it was all that it was Harrington jackets bucket heads you know longer lads. bit of hair here than the rest 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, she, no one was into her because it was just, they'd made it like an indie lad's day and then put her in the middle because yeah. she was bigger than Jake Bug, but smaller than Paul Wet. But, but it's the same thing with, yeah, Royal Blood. And Royal Blood are interesting because they're sort of, they are on Radio 1 as much as, you know, all the other pop acts that are on Radio 1. But yeah, they do stick out because they are a rock band as opposed to like, you know, I guess call it pop, you know. But yeah, it's it was yeah, it was interesting. But I guess it's like heat of the moment. If you're playing and you're getting nothing back, then you you are going to be like, what is this? This is because I don't know. Maybe it feels or is it genius? What marketing? Because they got a new album coming yeah. out, and they are being talked about here, yeah, online, <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. And now people are like, oh, Royal Blood, yeah, 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 they're back in my back in my um, maybe because bands can once they've been going a certain amount of time and they do, you know. Your Royal Bloods, like your Cold Plays, your, your bands who sort of explode, and then every three years bring out an album, and it goes to number one, mm. and they do a big tour, and then nothing for two years, yeah. and then it just repeats and repeats. They become like part of the furniture, yeah. And you don't, and then it just becomes like, oh yeah, you forget about them. Mm. They're not new anymore. No. They're not new. They're not like, and if you like them, you still like them. If you don't, you move on with your life. Mm. And so maybe this was like, do you know what? If I get really arsy, <laughs> yeah. this will get us people will talk about us, yeah. PR and talk about it, and then remind people we exist. Yeah, because that's what most of life is in the arts. <laughs> it's just reminding yeah. people you exist. Yeah. You know, I've even done it with our agency. Like, just to let you know, we are still a band. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can still put us forward for gigs, and they're like, oh great. Yeah, and then you get loads of gigs, yeah. and you're like, why weren't you putting yeah. us out for gigs before? Yeah. You know, I think, I think. Um, Ox had a band and they really did they just no gigs were coming in and he spoke to the agency like oh like one of my bands isn't getting any mm. gigs and for some reason the agency had a note or some something where they were like don't put this band out <laughs> for no reason that's a for good no reason idea. at all and Ox was like no you can put the band yeah. out like they are and then they suddenly got loads of gigs yeah where it's like you know, and these things can happen. I got once described as a. I didn't get forward, put forward for a depth gig mm. because someone said, "Oh, my drumming was a bit too tippy tappy." <laughs> and I'm it glad was like you got over it. <laughs> well, that gig was was with an extreme sound limiter yeah. for like for Victoriano, which is like folky. So I had to play really quietly, yeah. and the gig that I could potentially have depth for was like big loud stuff, and it's like no. Yeah. <laughs> I could hit the I hit the drums really hard. <laughs> like you've done other gigs with me where I hit the yeah. drums really hard, you know. And that can say so you just got to remind people you exist sometimes. Maybe that's all Raw Blood are doing. Yeah, so don't forget. Well, don't forget about us. Like we're still here. Billy Joe, remember when he had his meltdown at iHeartRadio? You know that split opinions because some people were like, "Oh, what is he doing?" That was embarrassing. But some people were like, "That was the most rock and roll thing I've ever seen." And but it definitely I know a lot of people are like, Fucking hell, I haven't really paid attention to Green Day. Now I will. Yeah. You know? Well that's the other thing. I mean, a lot of other rock stars have done a lot worse. Yeah, yeah, oh my god. I mean he didn't eat a bat, did no. he? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So and maybe are we just a bit like rock and roll is so dead we've forgotten what it's yeah what a rock and roll well, they, they, star should that. be doing yeah because he left and I'm sorry, but just putting your middle fingers up at yeah. the radio one's big weekend crowd. It's not that bad, no, is it? No, but people were getting angry. They were going, oh, to a whole preteen, teenage audience, putting your middle finger up, that's not very good. And it's like... They're all on drugs. It's a, it's it's a if rock they, gig. If there's anywhere where drugs are kicking around, it's the BBC yeah. radio weekend, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. If you've got to get through so oh, around set, you need to be off your nut. Yeah, so yeah. fair play, Royal Blood. I'm still a massive fan. Don't worry. You know, yeah. not that... Are you looking forward to the new album? Yeah, I am. Yeah. I, um, yeah. I am. They're playing Portsmouth Guildhall actually, in October. So I might come down for Are that. you going to go? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it'd be nice to see them there because it's yeah. a bit smaller. I feel like I've only ever seen them outside. I always see them at outdoor gigs, which is fun. But um, yeah, they are great though. They're just sort of like a solid rock band. But they are, you know, as you said, they're now just in the... Uh, the zeitgeist. Yeah, in the main, in the, they're, just, in the they're just a rock band. That part of the... Yeah, they'll release an the album every three years and do a big tour. And it'll be great. And then they'll disappear again. And they'll just be here forever, you know. Yeah. Sam Smith as well. 
cancelled his gig after four songs. Was mm-hmm. that publicity? You know, I don't know. Or is that just... It's all creaking. It's all it's creaking, creaking. creaking. Everyone's... Everyone's creaking. He's pro- Mike's probably just annoyed at... Yeah. ...cost of living. And, I mean, he's probably not. He's got loads of money, but... <laughs> You know, Do you know what? I think maybe, maybe he had to call the AA out trying to drop a sofa <laughs> off at the tip. Do you know what? It's a funny thing because I, I think also sometimes when you're doing a gig that's like, you know, uh, a big gig or first gig back or something. I remember it's not the same as Big Weekend. But when I was in, I'm going to mention the contract, when I was in Mallorca, there was this one big place that you could play. And the band I was in never got to play it. And then for one, some reason timetables changed another band couldn't do it and we got to play like the biggest venue of all the venues the bands play and there was always 500 people there whatever and it was like oh this is going to be great and i think i'd hyped it up so much and then my in-ears weren't really working and it just made it the worst gig ever and i was so pissed off afterwards because i was like that was the one time i got to play that place and it was annoying so maybe i think it's also a bit of that maybe it's like you know, they're like, yeah, big weekend. There's going to be a big crowd and you sort of hype it up to yourself. And then when it isn't as good as what you think it will be, because that's the thing, you know, people commenting who have never played, probably have never played a massive gig. And then they go, oh, how self-entitled. But I don't know if it is. If you, if you sort of go, I don't know if that's your, if you're used to people getting a reaction and you know that you're a good band and then no one cheers it's like you see why you get angry you know um kings of leon famously did it at reading if you remember that one but they were just mm. annoyed at the crowd and they were like come on what what is this this is you know it must be embarrassing musicians are emotional people yeah. <laughs> that's where the songs come yeah. from <laughs> exactly you know but, so you're gonna get a little bit of kickback yeah exactly but anyway um just before we go mm. Pretty sure I am going to speak to Graham. Oh, I'm yeah. going to go down Graham Russell uh, soon. My sticks are getting a little bit frayed. I've, I, I'm a man. I have four sticks in my bag. That's it. Yep. I just have four drumsticks. Um, getting a little bit frayed. I don't know if you get this when they just start, you know, fraying in the middle because I'm all rim shot, baba. Yeah. Um, where you, when you're then hitting, you can just feel the wobble. Yeah. You can just feel that little wobble. But I think what I'm going to do is. Is when I get some sticks, just to, for a little experiment, I'm going to go with five A's, mm. but I'm going to get a five A from as many different brands as I can. Yep. Budget restraining, so probably three. Yeah. In my head, Vic Firth, Zildjian, and Varta, maybe. Yeah. Maybe slip a Promark in. Don't know. I'd go Promark Twitter, before so. Zildjian because I always see Zildjian as more sure? of a symbol thing. But yeah. Well, I used to play Zildjian sticks when I was younger. Yeah. So it'd be good to go back. Um, and A, I want to weigh them. Mm you know, see what Pat was talking about yeah, with the yeah. different weights um, and just have a little play with some different sticks. Yeah. See see if there's anything outside of the Vic Firth world that I might be interested in or there might be no difference at all. Yeah. Might be like Weetabix, they're all made in the same factory Yeah, and just have a different label on them. Yeah. Do you know that? Like supermarket yeah, yeah, yeah. Weetabix. I remember you telling me this It's the same. Yeah. Same fact. Yeah. It's one of my party facts. Yeah. It's a good party <laughs> fact. Yeah. Just to interrupt you. Yeah. Weetabix. Yeah. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm also as well. The cracks of my crash are getting a bit bigger, mm. so maybe I'll, maybe I'll. It's annoying though because I, w- I want a new ride. Yeah. But the ride is purely taste. Mm. The crashes needs replacing. Yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So if I buy the ride, I still have a fucked crash. But if I buy the crash, then I still, I'm, I'm just further away from getting a new ride. Yeah. Fuck it. Maybe I'll buy both. Do it. Why not? No, I can't. I can't. I can't. Yeah, but you could, though. I could, yeah. yes. Yes, of course I could. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, I've Maybe I'll have a chat to Graham when I'm there. Yeah. Graham, come on the podcast, yeah, yeah. mate. He'll go, what? And I'll go, drum and drum. Yeah. What the fuck is that? Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> what, I'll buy a symbol. Yeah. And then we... Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll good. give you money to come on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, do it, boy. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, um, next week, I think, unless he cancels, we'll have a guest. Yes. Looking forward to that one. Yeah, me too. Very yeah. much so. Seems like a good lad yeah. already. So, um, and, uh, yeah, it's just a good, a good reason. Mm. For anyway, yeah. 
going to bounce. I've got some work to do. Yeah, me too. I'm going to go to podcast. James Gillingham studio now. Ooh. Yeah. Practice? Yeah, practice, big time. But Drums? Well, yeah, but it's weird. Well, yeah, because okay. I need to practice bass for the gig we've got on Saturday. Um, mm. But I, um, but it's weird practicing drums because I'm still just practicing snare technique stuff. So I get in a studio, full kit, and go, right, let's just do some snare work. And I'm like, could have done this at home. But, um, but it's nice to be in a big drum room, you know. It's, uh, it's yeah. exciting. Anyway. Great. Have a, nice one, boy. Have a good I'll day. I'll see you on Saturday. Innit? Yes. Although that would have already happened. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Drum and Drummer. You can find us on Instagram at Drum and Drummer Podcast. And you can send us an email to drumanddrummerpod at gmail.com. Remember, just pick up the sticks and twat it. <laughs>